we've definitely had an impressive move on Bitcoin, right? So, I mean, Bitcoin has finally woken up. I think that you see a lot of this hype building very, very quickly, which for me is a little bit of a concern, right? You know, I've been through many bear markets in my 25 plus years of trading, and it's very rare that a bear market ends with euphoria coming in so quickly. Usually the first 10, 20, 30% after a bear market, investors are very, very skeptical. And that's not what I'm seeing this time. And that makes me a little nervous, to be honest. You know, it does. I think that people were just kind of biding their time and, and they're just jumping back on the bandwagon. I'm seeing incredible pumping across all social media platforms. Bitcoin continued a stunning comeback on January 14th as $21,000 appeared for the first time since early November. Hello and welcome to Money Talks. In today's video, founder and chief market strategist at InTheMoneyStocks.com and verified crypto investing Gareth Soloway updates about Bitcoin's current market standing, the final bottom in crypto, and his outlook for Bitcoin in 2023. You know, there hasn't been any change. You could argue that the Fed is coming to the end of their hiking cycle, but that doesn't mean interest rates are going to go back down, right? I mean, we figure the, the Fed funds policy you know, you know, level is going to remain at 5-ish percent for most of 2023. So you don't have that dropping of rates that can stimulate kind of the Bitcoin surge again, like past bear markets ending, nor do you have quantitative easing going on, both of which are unlikely to come in this year. So for me, this is very classic of a, a bear market rally. And that's why I'm a little skeptical. I had some longs going into this. I was talking about a potential breakout. We've gotten that. But I always said it would be a breakout that would get bulls to kind of jump back on the ship. But it probably is a shorter lived bull market run uh, intra bear market, right? So let me show my charts here because I think there's some cool things to look at. So number one, if we see this chart here, right, this is the bull run that we've just experienced. Incredible, right? I mean, we haven't experienced this in quite some time, but, but number one, I mean, it looks big, but if we zoom out on the chart, I think it's important to keep it in perspective, right? This is what we're talking about. This is what's getting all the hype is this move up in Bitcoin. And again, like you said, very normal because people had been kind of lulled to sleep with no volatility. I think we had the lowest volatility in Bitcoin history. So it was kind of dictating something would wake things up. But again, you have to look at, okay, this is the down market and this is where we are right now. Is it anything yet to get excited about? And I'm going to tell you where I'm going to get a little bit excited. If we were to take out this high right here, which is the beginning of the FTX collapse, where we saw FTX, you know, and all the fraud and all that come to light, that's where if we could get above that psychologically, I think that would be a positive for Bitcoin. But now, notice when you Bitcoin say get above out. it, when you say get above it, you mean break above and start using that level as support, not just break above and then return. 100%, right? So that's so important because people will see an intraday move above or even a close above get very excited and then they'll wonder why price gets slammed back down. So you want to see price get above and actually stay there and consolidate there, right? And again, if you look at where Bitcoin has stalled here, it's right at that level. Now, let's talk psychology of the markets because this will be a great educational part is that why do these levels have so much resistance? And the answer is this. Over here, you had choppy sideways to up move. You started to make moves to the upside right here, right here. A lot of people were buying Bitcoin. And then all of a sudden, that floor got just pulled out from under them. And they saw their accounts drop by 25, 35, 45%. In some all cases, all coin cases, it was 50%. And so what happens is when price goes back there, those people that saw their 10,000 account at 5,000, they're made whole again. And there's this psychological thing about saying, okay, I'm back to break even. Let me get out. Let me just walk away at this point. And that's why you have the technical resistance right at that level. So to me, this is the level I'm watching right around 21,500. Let's see in the next few days what happens. I actually put out a short signal on Ethereum yesterday when we were above 1550. I think we're in a position to see a pullback here. The pair had faced major suspicion after it began to make up serious lost ground through the week, with analysts warning that a retracement could occur at any time. Nonetheless, only brief periods of consolidation accompanied Bitcoin's ascent, with weekly gains sitting at nearly 25%. In doing so, BTC USD took out its realized price at $19,700, an old time high from 2017, $20,000 and the 200 day moving average. 
The latter saw its first resistance support challenge since October 2021, one month before Bitcoin's most recent all-time high. You could see that. I mean, it was just incredible the last couple of days, but especially yesterday, how you could see the shorts just where price went up $100 on Bitcoin in a matter of seconds because it was that short covering just squeezing going on. And again, that's the key is that, you know, if you look at the stock market and you, you've been around for a long time, Greg, is that, you know, you see these bear market rallies that are rip your, they call them rip your face off rallies because they're so intense and they get so much excitement from bulls. But again, if you look at the stock market, we've had moves like that. And in fact, I showed some charts earlier today. I posted one on Twitter, but basically what it was showing is that since Tesla has topped out, it had moves of 35%, 64%. 50%. And then even down here, you're at 18%, where it's, you know, here we are with Bitcoin up, what, 25, 30% off of the lows. I mean, that kind of falls right in the midst of these moves that we've seen in Tesla. And I do liken Tesla and the type of people that are investing in Tesla as the same that kind of get involved in Bitcoin and kind of have that mentality. So, so I think it's important. You could look at any stock. I mean, you could look at Apple, Amazon. A lot of them have these bear market rallies where they jump 30, 40, even 50 percent, but then ultimately find themselves making new lows. And so just be I would just caution people out there. Yes, you know, yes, it would be great to know that Bitcoin has made a low pivot and maybe we're starting to head up, but I wouldn't get too excited just yet. Right. And, and so here you're at, what are we at right now? We're at 35%. So again, you know, you could, you could argue just like you're saying is that this is at, at this point, we don't know if this is anything bigger yet. And to really be kind of on that bull, like new bull market will be at all time highs in six months from now is, is probably a little bit of a jump the gun type scenario. <laughs> six months. What about next week? Hey, I think I, I was seeing that on Twitter too. According to CoinGlass, these totaled around $125 million for January 14th alone, with the period from January 11th onward bringing nearly $300 million of short liquidations. Including altcoins, liquidations totaled nearly $775 million for the same three-day period. Traditional markets were also higher for the week, the S&P 500 gaining more than 2% as Q4 earnings season began and as U.S. inflation numbers, though remaining elevated, continued to move lower. Optimism has been compounded by the first monthly inflation decline in two and a half years and further sharp annual declines in both the headline and core readings, Erlem wrote. Yeah. In fact, what I think is so amazing about this is that you could see these kind of these moves that were occurring in stocks were precursors. And what it was telling you was that it was a risk on trade again, which then if you connected the dots, gave us a heads up that it, if it's risk on in Bed Bath Beyond, GameStop, AMC, all these things were running up ridiculous amounts. Wouldn't it make sense that the crypto market was going to get a squeeze as well? And again, I think that's such a cool thing to kind of connect the dots through different asset classes. Yeah, for sure. I mean, you know, and, and again, we could flip over to AMC here. I mean, you could see the same sort of pop in AMC. I mean, not as dramatic as Bed Bath Beyond, GameStop, uh, all these stocks. I mean, look at GameStop from this low of 15 bucks. It got as high as 20 in one or change. That's a 33%, 40% move right there. So yeah, I mean, you're seeing it across the board. I think partially this is a result of what I call the January effect, right? Where in December, you have lots of pressure from people saying, all right, I made money in crypto earlier, early in the year. I booked profits on Doge or this or that. Now I have losses on my, the rest of my portfolio. Let me sell to kind of not pay taxes or limit my tax liability. And then that's all done coming into January. So you don't you have those sellers kind of going away. And then you also have the fear about FTX and kind of the shorts that we're building there as well, saying, oh, this is going to crush. I mean, I can't tell you how many times I went on interviews in the last three weeks and just said, you know, Solana, yeah, I mean, it's absolutely potentially could go to zero, but there's a trade here. And the trade is very simple. It's that, you know, you have an $8 coin that could go to zero. So you're risking eight bucks, put 2% of your portfolio in it, but it could also go up 300%. So it's like a risk reward assessment. And obviously we see here what it ended up doing, but but yeah, it's super fun to trade this market. Yeah, no, I'm in agreement with you on that. And I think that's my next case for downside in Bitcoin or, or crypto in general is the idea that we'll get some regulation out there that actually will help the case for longer term sustainability in crypto. But the next leg down to me is where you start to see the asset markets like the stock market really start to tumble when we do enter recession. And then the biggest question is, right, and, and I think we talked about this in the past is when we get to the, that point, 
all investing people, you know, all commentators, all investors, they're going to look to the Fed to bail us out because that's what we've been accustomed to doing for the last 12 years, 13 years. And the Fed's going to say, honestly, can't do that. We can't start printing again. So now you're in a sustained economic recession where asset prices, because the companies will earn less, are going to have to go lower. And that question is how much of that sell pressure in the stock market trickles in to the crypto markets. So what are your thoughts about Gareth Soloway's prediction? Tell us in the comments. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe. See you soon with the next video. Thank you so much for watching.